So if you understand how to work with square roots, well, you should be able to do this problem without the aid of a calculator. But uh, a lot of people are going to have a tough time with this problem because uh, although it looks pretty simple and the problem is the square root of 2 plus the square root of 1 half, there's actually a decent amount of steps that you have to do in order to get this thing right. But uh, anyways, let's see how well you do with this problem. Again, no calculators. And if you have the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. Then, of course, I'll walk through all the steps necessary to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this right now, because we do have a decent amount of steps that we have to cover. Now, if you're not familiar with a lot of these uh, principles that I'm going to go through, and you are at this level of, let's say, pre-algebra, algebra, algebra one, well, these are things you certainly need to master. And if you need additional help beyond this video, uh, I will give you some uh, suggestions. But uh, in the meantime, let's go ahead and just take a look at the problem. So first things first. First, we're looking at the problem, and we're going to ask ourselves, can we add uh, the square root of 2 plus the square root of 1 half? Well, we're not sure yet. Okay. Now, of course, we can. But if you're just looking at this problem you know, initially, you know, you're saying, well, I'm not quite sure, but your eye should be like looking at this thing and saying, this is a problem. Okay. In other words, the square root of one half, uh, this is not allowed in mathematics. Now, you might be saying, what are you talking about, Mr. U2 Math Man? Well, uh, this is, isn't a correct way to express this value. We have to fix this up. So the first thing we want to do is rewrite the square root of one half into a different expression, and then we can judge whether, in fact, we can add these two values together. But uh, if you're not even sure, you know, when you can add or subtract square roots, let's take a look at a simple example to kind of demonstrate uh, when you uh, actually can do this. All right, so I'm just going to show you this example, All right? Now, you just take a look at it, and you could probably figure out for yourself when you can add and subtract square roots and radicals. All right, so here we have 7 radical 2 plus 4 or 7 square root of 2 plus 4 square, uh, 7 square root of 2 plus 4 square root of 2 is equal to 11 square root of 2. So this is the correct answer, and it appears that we're just adding these numbers, and that's exactly what we're doing. So we're allowed to do that because uh, we're dealing with a square root of 2. You see, we have 7 square roots of 2 over here. We have 4 square roots of 2 over here. So altogether, we have 11 square roots of 2. So that is um, basically the simple rule. Now, let's suppose we had this problem. We have 7 square root of 2 plus 4 uh, times the cube root of 2, okay? Well, we cannot add these expressions because these two things right here are different. You see, when you add and subtract square roots and radicals, the square root or radical parts have to be identical. This is very much like or exactly like working with uh, uh, like terms in algebra. So if you have 7x plus uh, 4x, of course, the answer is 11x. But if I have 7x plus 4x squared, well, I cannot add these because these are not like terms. All right, so just a quick review on when we can indeed uh, add and subtract square roots. So we're going to be looking for this kind of situation where the, you know, we have the same uh, square root or radical you know, um, involved, and then we kind of simplify. But we can't do anything, again, because this needs to be fixed. All right, so the square root of 1 half, uh, this is a problem. Now, what is the problem here? Okay, well, if you know the answer to that question, put that into the comment section. But the problem, uh, you can't really see it uh, in this form here, but you can see it better in this form. Okay, so we need to understand that in uh, mathematics, in algebra, uh, when you have a square root of a fraction, there is a property that says the square root of an entire fraction is equivalent to the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. So in other words, I can write this big uh, square root and I can uh, break it up into two smaller square roots. Now at this point, uh, hopefully you can identify where uh, the problem is, okay? Well, the problem is right here. You see, we cannot divide, we cannot have 
uh, an irrational number in the denominator. So if you take the square root of 2, you're going to get a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal. It's going to go on and on and on. So in math, this is not allowed. So we need to fix this up and uh, kind of rearrange this without changing the value. We just need to write it in a different way. So let me give you another example. So if you have 7 over the square root of 3, this is a problem because we have this irrational number in the denominator. But if you have the square root of 3 over 7, this is not a problem because we have a lovely uh, whole number down in the denominator. And uh, irrational number in the, num uh, the numerator is not a problem. Okay, It's only situations, again, where um, uh, the radical is in the denominator. Now, it's not just any square root because if you have the square root of 4, for example, down in uh, the denominator, well, that's equal to 2. Okay, So it's only uh, irrational numbers like the square root of 2, things that are going to end up with these decimals that go on and on forever. All right, so how do we fix this situation? Well, again, these are things that uh, you should uh, know, uh, hopefully. And if you don't know, we'll quickly review how we can fix this up. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this entire thing and we're going to multiply by 1. You see, because anything multiplied by 1 is itself. But we're not just going to use any 1. We're going to use a very fancy 1. And here is our 1 right here. You see, anything divided by itself is 1. So we're taking this square root of 1 half times the square root of 2, and we're going to multiply it by 1. Okay. Now, why are we using this 1? Well, if we use this one right here, this is going to fix our problem with this square root uh, down in the denominator. So here's how you determine how to get this little, nice little fancy one. The procedure is the following. Okay. So when you have the square root of 2 down in the denominator, you're simply going to multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 2. Right. So most of you probably know that. But uh, in actuality, what you're doing is just multiplying by 1. Okay? Now, there's a reason why we're doing that, because when we uh, multiply these uh, square roots, now, how do you multiply square roots? Well, you can multiply the numbers under these square roots. So the square root of 1 times the square root of 2 is equal to the square root of 1 times 2, which, of course, is uh, equal to the square root of 2. Now, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 right here is equal to the square root of 2 times 2, which, of course, is equal to the square root of 4. And now, at this point, we're like, oh, I see why we did this, because the square root of 4 is 2. And now, we have our uh, square root out of the denominator. All right, so over here, let's just go back and review. Uh, we had the square root of 1 half. We fixed this all up. And now that the square root of 1 half uh, is now equal to the square root of 2 over 2, we can actually uh, think of the problem this way. Okay, so we have the square root of 2 plus the square root of 1 half. We now know that the square root of 1 half is equal to the square root of 2 over 2. And because this is a fraction, it may not be a bad idea to think of this square root of 2 as a fraction uh, uh, in and of itself, right? So this is a little bit of a hint on what the next step is going to be. So how do you uh, express anything as a fraction? Well, just put it over 1. Okay, so here is our problem. Now, at this stage, you might want to think of a simple example, maybe like 1 half plus, uh, oh, I don't know, let's say, um, let me give you uh, uh, 1 fourth here. There you go. <laughs> I had to kind of think of a simple example here that uh, this problem is pretty similar to what you're going to do right here. Okay. So just think about what would you do in this case? Uh, it's probably pretty close to what you're going to do right here. All right, now, even if you didn't know how to add and subtract square roots, I've given you a lot of clues. The way I like to kind of explain uh, problems is to, you know, kind of give uh, hints and suggestions along the way, because as soon as you think you know how to finish out the problem, you should pause the video and finish out the rest of the work. Of course, I already sh uh, showed you the right answer, but uh, let's go ahead and take the next step. We have the square root of 2 plus 1, or square root of 2 over 1, excuse me, plus the square root of 2 over 2. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style. And if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you, well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description. But they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. 
So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. Okay, so here, hopefully you were thinking in terms of, uh, you know, hey, we have a fraction here with a denominator of two, and we have another fraction here, but it has a denominator of one. Now we can add fractions if we have the same denominator, right? So if we had like three over one plus one over two, so if I want to add uh, these fractions, what would I do? Well, I would multiply this by two and this by two, so we have a, a lowest common denominator of two. And now, of course, I'm assuming you understand fractions. And if you do, you can understand this step right here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, take this denominator here because the uh, denominator here is 2. And we're going to change this to a 2 so we have a common denominator of 2. So we're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by 2. Okay, so 2 times 1, of course, is 2. And 2 times the square root of 2 is what? Well, that's 2 square root of 2. All right, so here we have... Uh, two fractions, uh, the same denominator. So now we can simply add the numerator. So uh, when we add these, can we add the numerators? We have square roots of two. Remember how we do this, right? So we have two square root of two plus one square root of two. So what are we going to do? We're going to add these coefficients two and one because again, we can do this because we have square roots of two and that's going to be over two. So two square root of two plus one square root of two. Again, we're going to add these numbers right here, and that's going to give us 3 square root of 2 over 2. Okay, so this is how we do this little problem right here. Again, you know, in the beginning of this video, you know, I said that a lot of people maybe, you know, could have a tough time with this because, you know, it, this problem doesn't uh, look like it would require too many steps, but actually we did have to do a decent amount of work in order to solve this problem. But again, if you're at this level of, you know, algebra or beyond, this uh, should be pretty easy for you. And if it isn't, it's something that you definitely need to review. And again, you can check out my full main math courses if you need additional help with any of this stuff. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.